Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name's Eric, and welcome back to a brand new video here on the Bioshock Hub. In today's lore video, we're going to be talking about a character that I wish would have gotten more screen time or maybe her own NPC, but alas, that didn't happen. The only time we see her is on a table, and you guys should be seeing that on the screen now. What character am I talking about, you may ask? Well, that would be Diane McClintock. So, before Rapture's Civil War, she was Andrew Ryan's mistress, and it seems Ryan had a lot of those, so it's safe to say he might have been slightly a pimp. Who knows? So, like I said, we have Diane McClintock, who was one of Andrew Ryan's mistresses, as well as Jasmine Jolene, whoever else, I'm not entirely sure, but he definitely knew how to get what he wanted. With Miss McClintock moving to Rapture and becoming involved with the most powerful man in Rapture, that being obviously Andrew Ryan, this gave her somewhat of a distorted view of life in the city. Eventually, she became so enamored and obsessed with him that she even began talking about carrying his child, an idea that Ryan briefly considered in the Audio Diary Generation, which I'll play for you right now. Diane insisted that we spend a weekend at the Adonis, and already I find myself seeking a respite from my vacation. And she deems it necessary to chide me for working. The words dissolve into an endless animal bleat. I founded Rapture to be free of law and God, to live among those for whom work is our wage. Yet, when Diane speaks of bearing my child, I am given pause. Till now I had never considered my legacy. Perhaps, perhaps after the new year. During the masquerade ball for New Year's Eve of 1959, Diane attended it at the Kashmir restaurant. You guys know where I'm going with this. If you have not learned about the Civil War and would like to watch an in-depth review on it, I'll leave a card at the top right hand corner of the screen, click it and it'll take you straight to that video where I explain Rapture's Civil War. So I digress. Before she went and she planned to attend, Ryan ended up blowing her off to do something I guess that was more important. When the restaurant itself was attacked, Diane suffered injuries to her face causing permanent disfigurement, and this was due to Atlas and his men. After the riots and the bombing of the Kashmir restaurant, it's mentioned within a few audio diaries that she went to go see Dr. Steinman for facial reconstructive surgery. And I don't know about you guys, but I would not let that lunatic anywhere near my face, but I digress. However, despite the work that Dr. Steinman ended up performing on Miss McClintock, her face was not left in the same condition it was prior to the events of New Year's Eve. And again, permanent disfigurement from bombs, shrapnel, etc. will do that to you. While attending the medical pavilion and getting surgery after surgery or checkup after checkup, Ms. McClintock heard rumors of what was going on between Atlas and Ryan, that being the Civil War and all of the uprising that Atlas was trying to do. She didn't really believe these rumors, however but she realized how much of the citizens in Rapture were suffering from the effects of fear-induced splicing and also civil conflict within Apollo Square, that being the class division, the rich and the poor. But when she ventured to Apollo Square, hoping to confront all of those that were responsible for her injuries, she was appalled by how merciless Ryan was in his handling of the rebels, ordering his guards to fight splicing with splicing and turn the square into basically a prison camp that was to do his own bidding. Obviously with this and the severity of Ryan's moods, ideals, and methods, this changed Diane. After seeing the interment of people that were considered opponents of Ryan, she became disillusioned and was taken in by the supporters of Atlas. I don't know if you really want to be a supporter of Atlas in this timeline, but hey, Miss McClintock, you do you, I guarantee you, you'll be seeing a chiropractor pretty soon here. As stated earlier within the video, Miss McClintock really liked to leave audio diaries about what was on her mind, and she was actually shocked to find herself becoming so actively involved 
with Atlas and his entire revolution. After personally participating in things like raids, robberies, theft, etc. for Atlas's rebellion, she was eventually introduced to Atlas himself. She seemed to have become enamored with him, calling herself a fool for ever thinking Ryan as, quote, a great man, and later expressing excitement to inform Atlas about the fruits of her mission. So, what does this mean? Essentially, she gets stabbed in the back by the first guy that she loves, by him blowing her off and all of that, and secondly, she gets stabbed in the back by Atlas, almost literally stabbed in the back by Atlas, but I digress. While Atlas sat in his office recording an audio diary, which I'll play for you here shortly, in his normal quote-unquote Fontaine voice, Diane unexpectedly walked in on him while recording her own audio diary. Atlas quickly stammered back into his Irish character and his accent, and while it is unknown if she actually discovered his true identity, was even curious about the Bronx or New York accent, or even heard it at all, for Frank Fontaine it was a risk he could not take and he killed her. As I mentioned a little bit ago, I will play all the audio diaries just so you guys can hear what happens, and also I'm going to show you that picture again of what actually happened to Miss McClintock. We went on a raid outside the wire today. We snagged 31 rounds of buckshot, four fried grenades, a shotgun, and 34 Adam. We lost McGee, Epstein, and Vallette. We got one of those goddamn big daddies in the bargain though. It was something awful they had to do to that little girl to get the atom, but... but we didn't start this thing. Ryan did. I can't wait to tell Atlas. He'll be so pleased. Never play a man for the short con when you can play him for the long one. Atlas is the longest con of all. Ryan wanted Frank Fontaine dead. I just gave him what he wanted. As Atlas, I got a new face, a clean record, and a fresh start. Ryan. Now, it's time to take to back, Rapture. He'll be so pleased. Oh, Mrs. McClintock, what are you doing here? Let me just turn this off. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We're not done yet. We're not done yet. We're almost there, but we're not done yet. I wanted to try a little bit of a different formula for a video at the end of the video. So we're going to be doing five fun facts about Diane McClintock. With this, I will be using the Bioshock Wiki because the people that put the time and effort into this, as well as to maintain this site in particular, absolutely blows my mind. I've donated quite a bit to them just because I really do enjoy the work that they do. So if you guys can spare a dollar, 50 cents, whatever it may be just to help them, I would highly recommend it. I'll leave the link down below in the description. Anyways, sorry about that, I got sidetracked. Coming in at number five. It is possible that the last name McClintock is a reference to renowned cytogeneticist Barbara McClintock, who contributed considerable understanding to the concept of genetic recombination during cell division, among other topics. Her work eventually netted her a Nobel Peace Prize, which is quite the honor. Now coming in at number four. This one is a little bit more obvious because if you look at her corpse on that table, it's basically a dead giveaway. But Diane McClintock's corpse actually uses a variation of the Baby Jane Splicer model, like a lot of other NPCs or a lot of other characters in the game. Remember, I believe there's only three characters and Bioshock 1 that have their own unique character model. The first being Andrew Ryan, the second being Frank Fontaine, and the third being Sander Cohen. Now coming in at number three, we're going to be talking about the actual picture that was used for her audio diary. If you want to check out the mugshot that was used for yourself, I'll put it up on the screen now. Diane McClintock's audio diary portrait is based on the mugshot of Tanya Williams a woman working at the Melody Lane Club within San Francisco, who was arrested in 1942 for quote-unquote indecent entertainment. Whatever the hell that means, I have no, but that sounds like one of the silliest things to actually get arrested for, but again, I digress. The same photograph for Williams was also modified for the original concept art for Lady Smith. 
Now for the number two slot, we're going to actually be talking about the novel Bioshock Rapture by John Shirley. If you guys have not read this book, I would highly recommend trying to pick it up if you can. This gives a lot of backstory about characters that didn't have prominent roles within the game, and it is also a very good read. Again, it's Bioshock Rapture by John Shirley. In this novel, Diane quickly realizes the truth as she walks in on Atlas slash Fontaine talking in his real accent while in Bioshock, it is left ambiguous whether she figured out his real identity or not. And I think that one's funny because obviously, if she heard him talk in a different accent when she's used to hearing him speak in an Irish accent, as well as her chiropractor gone wrong on that table, I think she found out. I think it's safe to say that. And then finally, at the number one spot. It was hinted on Twitter by Mr. Ken Levine himself that Diane would make an appearance within Burial at Sea. However, she is not seen, nor is she mentioned in the DLC's two episodes, which is a bit of a shame. Again, I love when characters that don't get the spotlight that they deserve actually kind of stay off in the distance. So, this would have been amazing if you could have met her before the events of what actually happened. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. So ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for the story of Diane McClintock. Again, I do apologize that there wasn't enough information to do a very long lore video. I'll work on that next time. And trust me, I think you guys are going to like this one because it's going to be on Sophia Lamb. I just about finished the script, so stay tuned for that. If you guys enjoyed the video and would kindly drop a like on it, that would be very much appreciated. Or a comment down below, it's completely up to you. If you disliked it, go ahead and dislike it. Just let me know what I can do to make the video better for you. And also, if you're new here and have not subscribed, what are you waiting for? For all this Bioshock goodness just to pass by you. Come on. <laughs> I'm sorry. Anyways, you can hit that red subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate that. Turn on all post notifications to never miss a video or a live stream later in the future. If you want to talk to me outside of YouTube, social medias are the best ways to do so. So things like my Twitter, Instagram, Discord server, Facebook page, and Twitch.tv where I will be streaming more often as well. If you want to know the links and check those out for yourselves, they will be down in the description below. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching, and thank you all so much for the recent amount of support within the past couple of days. It really does mean a lot to me. So with that being said, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day or night whenever you're watching this. Stay safe, take care, and talk to you all in the next video.